we're gonna try and buy one and bring someone else. Can't do it that way. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thanks for coming. Um, today we've got Cam and me talking. Cam is talking about the Java Devonization, and oh. then I'll be talking about the ARM processor. So we'll get rolling, and uh, I'll let Cam take it away. And All you can guys. steal the projector. Yeah, I'm stealing the projector here. You have lovely graphic design. Oh no, my computer's dead. Let's see if my computer actually likes this. My head wouldn't be in the way. Yeah, I think my head would be in the way. Okay, good. Is it? <laughs> well, my computer recognized it. It didn't recognize it's your not computer. Right. Protector. Oh yeah, um, Libre Office, you know, <laughs> Start throwing stuff together. So first, I'm going to start off with actually what a .dev file is. So for those of you who don't use um, Linux-based system, uh, instead of having your, your Microsoft version of .exes or your uh, Mac version of .dmgs, uh, you have these things called .devs. And what a .dev does is it not only installs the, the software onto your machine in a very uniform way, it also uh, finds all of the libraries and, and uh, dependencies that your software needs. And not only that, if you have it in a repository, which is the way that you install software on, on Linux, um, it will keep everything up to date, including every library, every package that you use, it will keep it all up to date. So let's say, for instance, like this is the standard way of installing software. Um, if I open up my terminal and say, I want to grab, First, install. What are you doing? I'm trying to get the to work. So first, I'm going to remove Skype to then install it again. This is, you know, the standard process for, for um, removing things. And then I say, I've got to find another process. I don't know. Remove it. Install it. I'm sorry? We will get installed. Just apt? Apt, yeah. yeah. Uh, <coughs> remove it or something. Something simple, something that doesn't have like 20,000. Oh, oh, good. So I'm going to remove git instead. Git's a um, version control system. So this is your standard way of removing something. So now it's gone. So to say if I want to install git, I say after you install git core, and it will install it for me. Real quick, real easy. And this, this will run in the background, never need to restart, never need to worry about it. It's installing, and once it's done, I'll, I can say git, and bam. So a .dev file, I'll show you what it looks like. Assuming I have one. Yeah, I do. Let's see. So this is um, in my uh, AI class. I created an AI version of HAL from um, from Space Odyssey, and so this is what all it's like. It, it, it just has HAL, or what it is. Um, a couple of details about who's the maintainer of the version, priority, these are all kind of very um, small things. And then I can reinstall and install the, the package. I think you guys get exactly what's going on here. So the awesome thing about this is that, like I said, um, the dev file installs and, and sets up everything, and it all is doing it in a very uniform way. So like say, 
if you have a Windows system, you assume most of your program files are in program files, but none of them have the same directory structure. Like if you go into you know, um, Microsoft Office, it has a different directory structure than Adobe Flash or whatever. So um, it, it updates itself every single library that you have. And um, like I showed you before, it's literally one click or one command and it solves everything for you. Um, it is, um, a dev file is highly compressed, so it's not like a giant .exe file where you have multiple toolbars being installed and all this mess. So, uh, the more advanced properties of the deputization pro pro uh, process is it allows you to have daily builds of your software. So what this means is that uh, if people know where my repository is, I can keep adding um, dot devs to it and it will tell everyone who has my uh, software installed that hey there's an update hey there's an update um, it also allows you to submit stuff to the Debian and Ubuntu repositories so that everyone who uses Ubuntu or Debian can um, use your software right, so you might be wondering why doesn't everyone use dot dev files since it's so awesome well one, the process is extremely error prone, extremely tedious. Uh, it's all in text files, and if you make one single mistake, it will not work. Like if you have an extra space somewhere, it's not working. So there's an easy how-to guide from Ubuntu. It's 70 pages of pure filth, like I, I put up there. It, uh, it gives you maybe four different ways of trying to approach it, and if you screw up one way, you can try another way. But uh, luckily, uh, the deputization process is geared towards C, and how people used to do job, job programs and create a .dev file was that they would create a C program which starts up your, your Java program, and then do the deputization of that C file. And that seems really complicated. Why can't I just create, I have a Java classes and I'd like to make a .dev file. Easy, easy, easy. So uh, last year, maybe two years ago, the um, Debian team uh, released something called Java Helper, and this is what I'll be using. It hacks the deputization process just enough that the 70 pages of pure filth are, is yours to complete, but you can just use Java instead. So um, another reason that no one uses .dev is because some of you use Windows and Mac, and I don't know why. It's like, this is, this is such an easy process as far as like getting your software out to people. Um, Probably do that slideshow mode. Yeah, sorry. So uh, the first thing you need to do, if you're following along, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. It's fine. So uh, first, you, you need to install two things. Um, you need to install something called Packaging Dev, which gives you all the libraries to build Adopt Dev, and then Java Helper, which um, allows you to use Java and package a dot dev file and these are the two commands that you use to install them. You'll install and do everything yourself. Save that, bam, you have it, that, bam, you have it. So um, it'll also keep everything up to date for you, assuming you run an update command every once in a while. So for the demo that I'm showing, I will use the I will create a uh, Java file called Hello Debian. It's like Hello World where I will have a window that pops up says hello world. But one special thing I'm using is this, the standard way of doing graphics in um, a, a Linux environment is using GTK, which is just a graphics library like Qt or uh, WX widgets. And um, I'm using the Java bindings. So that creates a very special um, thing you have to make sure that you are aware of when you're building the .dev file, that you have these these bindings that you have to make sure that you cover. And this is how you install said bindings. It's the Java, no Java. So far, so good. Everyone, including anyone? All right, so it'll be one Java class. I will use a special library, open up a window, say hello. So I'm gonna open up my thing here. I've already created it. Is GTK the same thing as GNOME? Yeah. Okay. So if you're it's like this is the GNOME desktop environment, um, and the tool to, to make windows that look like this are, is, is called GTK. 
So this is my hello Debian file. I'll explain each line. That's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, you have to say, hey, GDK, I, I want you to start up. And then you create a, a window. I'm setting the title to hello Debian. It's a, um, a 500 by 500 window. Then I create a label called hello. I put the label on top of the window. And I tell the window to show itself. And then I call GDK to act. So if you run this from Eclipse, should create this lovely window that says hello. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, and about 5,000 lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, the, the, the lovely thing about GDK and why I use it is you don't even need to do this whole like create everything you need and then set all the variables. You can do it in a GUI or, uh, um, XML interface. And you can put literally everything you ever wanted to have in a window into the XML and just, just like grab the objects as you need them. So it's really nice. Like so like 500 times better than this way. All right, so simple enough. <coughs> it, it creates a window. So let's go back to our slides here. All right, so now that we have our lovely Java class done, we're going to do some really weird things that you might think are crazy, but it's what you have to do in order to make um, the dev file. Uh, you know that Eclipse will give you, let's see, it's in the workspace three, hello Debian. So Eclipse will give you a source file, and the source file will have your, your package, and then bam, that's where it's stored. It's, it's nice that you have. It's nice for the deponization process if you have a fully qualified package instead of your default package is in the package. So like here, um, my package name is edu.american.student.hellodebian. It's just a weird caveat. Um, so what you need to do is create a new folder somewhere and then say uh, your package name, uh, dash, and then your version number. You have to do it this way. If you don't, Debian will get angry at you. So what I'm going to do is move all the source files into my Hello Debian 1.1. And so far, I have that. So um, we're going to open up the terminal. Sorry, I didn't see that. We're going to um, cd into our hello Debian 1.1. And these all our source file there. So I'm going to run the command jh make, make package. That's the Java helper's um, way of hacking the Debianization process just enough that you can then use your standard tools. So JH make, um, make package will set up everything that you need to continue uh, using Java with a deputization process. And so uh, JH make package will go through this interactive process of, okay, first, what is it? And I say it's an application, so A. Uh, does that have a, a build system? And I say no, it doesn't, so it creates a make file for me. Uh, and then it asks you what kind of Java runtime would you like to use? I'm just gonna say default. All right, so that's all you need to do. So now you'll, you'll notice that in our hello Debian file, uh, it's created a directory structure called Debian. And what this is basically is, is um, everything that the Debianization process needs to know. And they're separated in a bunch of text files. And if you ever edit them, which you will have to in order to make this process work, you have to be very careful to keep the format that the job helper made. So if you have an extra tab, if you have an extra space, if you have a line somewhere that's not supposed to be there, the, the deputization process will get angry at you. So I'm going to explain what each of these each of these files mean. Can just <coughs> yeah. if, if I'm not using Java, if I'm using C, what's the easy way to create all of these? So um, there is a there's one called uh, DH build, it's, um, it's the 
the standard build process, which will give you these, and just without all the, the Java mess. So it's uh, JH make package is almost the same as its C counterpart. It's just a matter of it, it adds like a manifest file for, for Java. So. Be very careful. An ex example error that's super duper annoying is I was messing with, let's say, the change log, which just tells you what you've done to the, to the software recently. Um, there's six lines, maybe. And uh, if you have an extra space here, it, the error will be like, hey, on line five, we encountered an end of file too early. And you're just like, OK. <laughs> There's nothing on line five. Why are you complaining? But if you had an extra space, it gets angry. Okay. So back to our slide here. So the first file I'm going to look is what I just showed you. This is a change log. Um, it's it, it, its purpose is to tell you exactly what you've done at each each release. It's not very important if you're just simply making a .dev file, but most of these are very important if you want a daily build where everyone knows where your repository is and they're grabbing updates constantly. <coughs> they need to know um, <coughs> what it's made for. So this is the, um, the, the Debian standard saying stable or unstable. Um, if you do it with an Ubuntu repository, you have to tell it which distribution you're using, like Nappy Narwhal or Onslaught, urgency, not very important. It, it creates an oh, initial release. And then this is the maintainer and the maintainer's email, which is just my computer. And then it has a log of when it happened. So it, this is not very important if you're just wanting to make a, a .dev file, you can keep it the same. So let's open up the So the compat file you should never ever touch. It's perfect the way it is. Just don't touch it. The, the control file is the most important file for if you're putting things onto a repository. You have these these different lines that if you screw up with the way that, like say you have an extra um, uh, new line character here, the entire thing will break down. So this is just the name of the package. There's um, a section called section, which at the moment's um, a miscellaneous, but this helps you uh, define what type of software you're using in your, your building. So there's ones for programming, there's ones for internet, web, uh, accessories, blah, blah, blah. Priority, usually it's standard or optional. If you're doing something with the kernel, it's probably urgent. Uh, then your maintainer is just your name, your email, which is just my computer at the moment. Um, Build depends. Build depends is particularly important. Uh, build depends says which libraries do your Java class use, like external libraries. If I wanted to use a .jar file and attach it onto my project, um, actually, but backtrack. This asks which uh, which repositories do I need to go to and grab a library dependencies. So say my program only runs if I have Skype. So I have to put here. Skype and then uh, the version number. So if I give a .dev file to someone and they don't have Skype, it will find Skype for them and download. Um, and then most of this is just fine, saying I use uh, the default to JDK, my standard version, uh, home page, I could put you know, HTTP hello.com. Uh, and uh, these three things are PHP key the way they are. And then there's description, which is Short description should be just the name of the uh, program, and then the long description is an actual explanation of what your program is doing. So I'm actually going to edit this file to uh, reflect Hello Debian that I just created. So it's fine keeping everything the way it is. But as you, as um, I noted before, I'm using a GTK. So if you don't have this Java version of GTK, uh, it won't run. So I need to tell it, hey, if this person doesn't have the Java version of, of GTK, I need you to go find it and install it. So I know just it's libjava, gnome java, 
and I want it to be at least 3.0. That's all I need to do. And uh, we're going to say this is called Hello Debian. And uh, what's very important, it's very hard to tell on the screen, but there is a space here. Again, if you screw up that space, it will get angry at you. And so each new line has to have that extra space there to, to let it know it's part of the long description and not part of the title. So that's all I need to do to the control file. I'm going to save it. Then there's the, the copyright file, which isn't particularly important if you're just wanting to make it a dev file. Usually you would say, hey, this is licensed under an open source license. Don't copyright it. Uh, most of these aren't important. The only one that's important right now is the hello uh, debian.manifest. What this does is it tells Java where the main class is. So in every Java program, you have a main function somewhere. So I need to tell it where this main class is. So right now it says has a little holder for, for main class, and I need to give it a fully qualified path to my um, main function. So right now I have to do my package name, uh, edu.american.student.hellodebian.test, and test is where test.java is, which has my main. That's all I need to do. And then there is rules. Rules is particularly important in this case. Um, what I kind of failed to mention, I don't know why it's getting Uh, you see where I'm importing um, GDK up here? This comes from an external jar that I've attached to the project. And if you've never done this before, what you do is you go to, uh, you right click, right click on your, your project, save properties, and then go to build path, and then go to add external jar. And if normally your jars are in user share jar, it's just something you should know. Um, and there's one called GTK, GTK 4.0.jar. And I just add it to the project to make sure that it knows when I say import GTK, it knows where to go. So back to my rules file. I need to tell uh, Java deputization where my rules file, or where my external jar that I just added to my project is. So I uncomment this export, and I say it's in user, share, Java, GDK 4.0.jar. And that just points it to the external jar that I'm using to compile my Java file. Okay, I think that is about all you need. So then so now we're ready to build .dev file finally. Um, you have to uh, cd into your directory with the share and the Debian file. Hello Debian. So here I have my source file and my Hello Debian 1.1. So I'm going to run a command called build package. And build package will I'm actually going to remove the remnants of, of my last bill just to be safe. Alright. Okay. So I'm going to run the build package command. I'm going to say dpackage build package, and then dash d. I don't even know what dash d does, but I know that you need it. <laughs> Not a clue. So it's saying that there's um, something angry with my change log, which doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> this is the part about being extremely error prone. And but you didn't even change it. I didn't. That's 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 what's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear I haven't even changed it. So why are you angry at me? <coughs> uh, 
get him to hello again. Let's see if I'm in the right. There we go. So you actually need to be in the in where all those text files are, and it just starts a building by literally throwing every command it can at it and seeing what what flies. <laughs> I mean, that's that's why it it's just it's running a bunch of commands. And what this does, uh, in all seriousness, uh, what this does is it creates a very very tiny version of Debian, installs it on there to make sure it's all like fine and dandy, and then gives you that very very small version of Debian. So I'll show you what it created. It created um, Debian directory, um, hello Debian.jar, which is an executable Java format. And it also moves the source over. So if, if we like inspect the uh, Debian file, or rather the Debian directory that it, it added, it's um, see the hello Debian. What it did was it created a very, very small version of what you can expect when you install this on your system. So it's saying, I'm going to install hello Debian in user, share, see the hello Debian, which is, I mean, this is just very standard. So uh, in my whoa, in my uh, user share hello Debian, there is a, a jar, which is an executable Java format. So I can now run hello Debian. Now, but we haven't actually made a .dev file yet. So I'm going to go back into my Hello Debian directory, and then I'm going to run this command, which is which will actually build the physical .dev file for me. It's the package B for build, and I tell it where um, my Hello Debian directory that it created is, and I tell you what I want the dev file to be called, I'm calling it Hello Debian.dev, and it will build it. So now, if I look, I have created a Debian file called Hello Debian. I double click on it. I see my short description, my long description, um, the maintainer priority section, and so forth. It's only 44 kilobytes. I can install the package, put its password, and bam, it's installed. So, theoretically, oh wait, may not be yet. It's, it's making sure I have all the, all, the, all the necessary packages. So, theoretically, if I say hello Debian, it should open. Ah, <laughs> success. So, um, one last thing is, uh, the, what's really interesting is that entire process was gross and disgusting and 60 pages. I have created a very tiny tool that will do literally everything, including the stuff I didn't cover for you. It's like, I don't know, a two second process. So I call this Java Dev Builder, which I have on a PPA, which means you can go to the PPA and say, hey, here's a repository, and then you add it to your system, and then you say, hey, install Java Dev Builder. Install for you. So I'm going to run it just to show you what it looks like. Here, I'm going to say load it in. I give it the package name and then I give it the source file. Oh, and there's an error. So there's no, there's no point exception somewhere. But what it does, I, it's, it's been a while since I worked on it. Um, you just tell it all the things that I, I was editing, all those, those text files. You tell it the same information, but it'll make sure it doesn't make any mistakes, like an extra space. Um, it, it also allows you to put a home page, new sections and priorities. And what's particularly fun is that it will assign the bill with a GPG key, which what that says is um, in a lot of Ubuntu and Debian repositories, you need to prove that you're the person who's uploading it. And so there's this awesome thing called the, the GNU Privacy Guard key. And um, my assistant will already find the key that you have and sign the build. And I will also upload it to a PBA so I don't have to worry about doing any commands. And then it will build, and it will be lovely.
but I, I will, that, that's where you can find it. That's it. Any questions? Or did I just confuse the living hell out of all <laughs> Thank all God right. for your tool. Of Thank God for my tool when there's not a null pointer exception. <laughs> okay. Did you submit this to video? Uh, I will once I get things like null pointer exception solved. <laughs> Uh, so it sounds like you took something that was like extremely complex and you made it really straightforward. Um, I try. Yeah, salute to you for that yeah. one. Sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> while most people were like partying on New Year's, this is what I was doing. Was <laughs> ah, this is so interesting. Um, it sounds like there's maybe like a few different items. Like I could imagine maybe at some point, say you have all these other advanced like flags and stuff you want to compile your Java package with. Um, the, the, the most, like, I, I still haven't really touched into, like, the really advanced properties of, of the Debian file, because it will do awesome, amazing things if you allow it to and you know what you're doing. The only thing I've figured out how to do is, you know, sometimes when you're creating a, a Java project and you have, like, maybe a folder somewhere that has all your images, there isn't really a way to tell uh, Debian to include that folder of images that your program is so reliant on. Um, so I've realized you can hack it by, um, you, you saw where I had that user shared and it showed you an exact replica of what would be installed on your system. You can drop it in there and then when a Debian builds, it will include that. I, it's very weird hacks you have to just know about in order to have more complicated things. And then like, and I know that just being like, and this being a Windows guy, like I've come across, you see make files and hit, and I have no idea. I got some batch experience, but what what I particularly love about make and, and hate at some time, um, it it provides a very standard way of installing software. So say you have this massive C source code everywhere, you just say make, and or like you know, install, make, yeah. bam, it installs and bam, a binary. This is kind of like a dev, but it's like a make. It's um, like pre dev. Like okay. for dev, like uh, dev will find all your, find every single dependency you'd ever freaking desire. Yeah, and makes will crash out on you. Yeah, all makes <laughs> makes will crash out if you're not very careful. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You, you got to be a lot more. It's like it's more so careful, but less, I guess, um, sort of. And so is dev like the most sophisticated build system out there on Linux right now? Well, that depends on who you talk to. Uh, sure. Some people are more fans of RPMs, which I hate and despise, and I don't actually know why anyone would use them. But so this is on, dev files are for Debian-based systems, so that includes Debian, um, Ubuntu, Linux, and there's also Fedora and OpenSUSE. I'm sure there are other. There are plenty of others that I don't really know. Gen, 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 how do you build things on Gen, Gen? I really don't have. It's uh, it's like a BSD build. It's Which a package package manager. And then I know Puppy of Linux uses the Yum system. I don't know what Yum is either. They, they they all have their equivalents, but the the Debian process, even though it's gross and disgusting, it's more sophisticated. I, I feel. Um, and then my my only other question would be like more like a sort of soft side question just from a Windows guy asking a Linux guy. Um, Linux seems very much like a system where there's tons of people out there building all this really useful software, but it's almost like these micro chunks. Like how, I know that when I'm adopting software, I go for like the biggest thing because that way I know it will have support um, and I know that it will have continuity. How do you, do you find yourself like shifting to a different mindset where you sort of take small packages here and there that people have built? Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I trust everything that's on the Ubuntu and Debian system because um, if you give something to um, a Debian repository and they're like, okay, this is pretty cool, we'll keep it, they assign a maintainer who is responsible for that package no matter what. So if crap goes down, that's the person you can call, that's the person you talk to. And, you know, they're usually more available than, say, Microsoft CEO. And uh, what I want to show you is literally all of the package, like there's trillions of them. This is um, a graphical way of doing apt install. It just will show you every single package in the known universe. And like I can type in anything I want. Skype's here, right there. And then it, it gives me information on some of them. I can grab a screenshot. And all to do is say I want the Skype plugin for Pigeon, which is like a common AIM um, client, say market, and it installs. So it's displaying from the internet right now. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll show you where it's grabbing from. This is just an odd place to put things, but 
if I go to CD Etsy, Etsy uh, at sort on <laughs> rude <laughs> sources dot list. That's what I want. Pico sources dot list. This is all of the uh, places it's going to. Um, I have several uh, Linux Mint repositories because it's Linux Mint thing, but it's also based off Ubuntu, so it's grabbing all of the Ubuntu repositories. And uh, this one is for, for the sole purpose of doing um, cross-compiling with Android. Um, so this one, this one is my own that I created on the Launchpad, and so people just add this in, and then they say, hey, I want to install Cameron software, and it'll install it and, and keep track of it. Very cool. 